Welcome back to Unit 4. We're still talking about sensation and perception, and now we're going to move into talking about our most advanced but most corrupt sensation, and that is our sense of vision in the eye. And so our sense of vision or sense of light is the most advanced sensation. If you think about the depth and the colors and the movement, uh, we can detect amazing things through vision. But it's also the corruption of this sense that leads to many forms of entertainment, such as animation. The idea that by moving pictures fast enough, there appears to be false movement. Or even 3D animation, the idea uh, with the disparity between our eyes, uh, we can make an illusion of 3D depth in movies. First, we're going to start off by talking about how vision is really the interpretation of light waves by our neurological system. And so we're going to discuss light. So when we interpret light, it's important to understand we're really looking at three different uh, characteristics of light. One of the characteristics is its color or its hue. Uh, you can see this by the, the rainbow. We're talking about red light, yellow light, blue light, etc. Then we also discuss the brightness of light. This is how dark or how light or how medium it is, how dim or bright light is. And then saturation may be the term uh, people are less familiar with, but this is sort of how grayed out it is, if it's gray or faded, or if it's very intense uh, and very uh, neon or fluorescent, if you will. Uh, and so I like to think about this in terms of the old Microsoft Paint um, custom color dialog box. And so down in the corner here, we can see a large square and if you were to move left or right in the large square you'd move through the colors of the rainbow and that's really moving your hue if we were to move up or down in the large square really going through what we call the saturation versus how grayed out versus how uh, fluorescent or saturated the colors were and then that little tiny narrow rectangle on the side you can move just up or down and that's really telling us the brightness between white and black and the, the colors in the middle so that's really the, the principles of light that we can detect and how are we detecting them? So now we're gonna talk about unique light waves. So light, uh, whether it moves as a particle or moves as a wave, we're interested in discussing light as a wave for this course. And so when we talk about U, brightness and saturation, it's really different physical components of these light waves that we are detecting. And so U, whether it's blue or red or yellow, really comes into play when we measure the wavelength of what light. That is, every wave uh, goes up and has a crest and then goes down and has a trough and, and then repeats. And how quickly this a wavelength repeats will determine its frequency or its wavelength. So the wavelength is the length it takes horizontally for these waves to go up and then down. So one wavelength is from one crest to the peak of the next crest. And uh, so if you have a very long wavelength, if it's an accordion that you stretch out and the wavelength is quite long, it's going to have a low frequency. That is, it goes up and down less frequently. So as the wavelength is larger, the fre frequency is lower, the inverse is also true. If you have a very crunched in uh, wavelength that goes up and down quite rapidly, it'll have a high frequency and a short wavelength. So we can see here that the top wave I've drawn uh, it has a longer wavelength and a lower frequency, and we're just hypothetically saying it would map onto the color yellow. And then the second wave I have drawn uh, has a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength, and it would hypothetically map onto the color violet or purple. And so this is really showing the differences between how we'd see different colors of the rainbow based on their wavelengths. We know, for instance, that red has the most stretched wavelength and violet has the most crunched in, squished wavelength in the visible light spectrum that humans can see. Uh, then we have brightness. So brightness, rather than being the horizontal stretch or squish, it's actually the vertical stretch or squish. So this is the amplitude of the waves. So what this means is even if they had the same wavelength, um, if the crests go up higher and the troughs go down lower, it's more exaggerated, we're going to perceive this as more bright versus if there's just very little movement, uh, we're going to see this as darker. I've taken the purple and I've just kind of squished it down to make it a darker purple and I've taken the yellow and I've squished it up to make it a brighter yellow, a lighter yellow, if you will. 
And then we have saturation. What is saturation? Well, this is really the purity of light. What we can see is we can see um, many red wavelengths and they would be seen as a very pure red light. Or we could see some red and some green and some blue all mashed together and it's going to be perceived as brown or gray or what have you. Uh, you might note here that in the visible light spectrum, there's no pink and there's no brown. And that's because pink and brown are combinations of wavelengths. And so there's no pink light, but there is uh, different lights that can be mixed together that our eyes and our brain interpret as pink. And so uh, what I've drawn here is three wavelengths of a yellow that would be perceived as a very uh, saturated pure yellow light versus I've mashed together all the lights of yellow and purple that I have and that would probably be seen as more of a murky brown-ish color uh, to our eye. So these components of light uh, can really impact how we perceive all the different combinations. Uh, but it gets a little bit more tricky than that. For instance, we know that pure white light coming from the sun uh, contains all possible wavelengths of light in the light spectrum. If we take a prism and we have the white light from the sun going through one end, we can get those different wavelengths to separate and we can see a rainbow at the other end. Uh, but what we find is in most commonly in nature is what we're seeing is what colors are uh, reflected from objects. So what often happens is, let's say a green leaf, for example, a green leaf that appears green to our eyes is actually reflecting green wavelengths of light, but absorbing all other of the visible light spectrums of wavelengths. So when the sun shines white light onto the leaf, it's absorbing the red, orange, yellow, blue, violet wavelengths, but reflecting the green. So we perceive it as green because it's only giving the green wavelengths to our eyes. Uh, so this often leads to the philosophical question, what color is the leaf really? It's absorbing everything but green, which is why we see it as green. So what color is it really? It's really absorbing everything else. Now, speaking of this combining of light, uh, there's lots of different theories about how light combines, and we need to think about whether we're adding light waves or removing light waves. Uh, and so there's the additive theory of light that you may be less familiar with, uh, but uh, both, these, both these photos on this slide I've taken myself. And so in the top photo here, uh, this was through purchasing uh, three flashlights and they each had a different color filter on the lens. So one of them had a green, and one had red, and one had a blue filter. Uh, and through the assistance of some helpers, uh, we shone all three flashlights on a white wall. And what you can see here is we're adding wavelengths of light because there's flashlights and we're adding light. When you're adding the green and red light together, uh, the green plus red actually equals yellow, the green plus blue equals cyan, and the blue plus red equals magenta. And in the middle of that Venn diagram, it's actually the closest we have in the image to white light. Uh, and so the three flashlights together should make close to white light because we're adding the wavelengths green, red, and blue together. So additive uh, theories of light is the idea that we're adding light waves and in the center we should get closer to white light. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we have the subtractive theory of light and this is when we're adding uh, pigments together. And because pigments are absorbing light, if you add lots of pigments together, you'll get the reflection of less light over time. And so this is not, not as illustrative by no means, I'm not a professional illustrator, but um, just drawing uh, with, with three different pencil crayons, um, or colored pencils, if you will, uh, there is red, yellow, and blue. And what we find is in the center of that Venn diagram now is the closest, it gets it to be a darker color and it's closer to black. Uh, and that's because we're removing uh, light waves. And that's because the yellow pencil crayon is, um, is absorbing everything but yellow, the red is absorbing everything but red, and the blue is absorbing everything but blue. So in the center, they're absorbing the most amount of light and reflecting the least amount of light. Uh, and so this is the subtractive theory. Although we're adding pigment, we're actually removing light waves. Uh, and so the center and the overlap should be darker.